Welcome, welcome everyone. Sam Leary here for Sam's writing class. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of my channel, what you can expect from me going forward. I want to first and foremost thank you for being here. On my channel I talk about all things digital writing. So UX writing, that's going to be a big topic of discussion coming up. I'll also talk about SEO, conversion rate optimization, pay-per-click, and fiction as well. I'm a fiction writer. Um, it's, you know, what I'm passionate about at my core. So I'm definitely going to draw on um, fiction excerpts, lessons whenever possible. So my goal is really to help folks leverage digital writing to find success in the professional world. If you look at the image that I've included on this slide, we see that workers needed at S&P 500 companies to generate a million dollars in revenue has decreased significantly um, since 1990. So this is going to be something we're going to talk a lot about going forward. And it's something I want to emphasize off the bat that a single person, two people, extremely powerful, especially if you're able to leverage digital writing. Um, so I want to add the most valuable writing forms to your repertoire. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you master skills, get them on your resume um, or just your repertoire. That's an easier way of saying it if you're not applying for jobs. Um, I want to teach you these skills, how you can leverage them in a professional environment to find success. So without further ado, let's get into it. So today's lesson plan, before I get into it, we can see it here, four parts, it's gonna be a quick video. This is just my channel intro for those who are interested. Um, but I wanna start with a quote, which is a lesser known Andy Warhol quote, and it is as follows. So, being good in business is the, is the most fascinating kind of art. Making money is art, and working is art, and good business is the best art. So. Really what I want to communicate with this, um, you know, I mentioned that I want to help folks leverage writing to find professional success. I think this quote kind of exemplifies, it speaks to me on a, on a, personal, t on a personal level because I came from the arts world. I was an English major in undergrad. I earned my MFA in graduate school. Business was never something that was on my radar until relatively recently. Um, so it, it's kind of this unique quote that in encompasses like my interest in the arts as well as my interest in business and how those two things are interconnected and intersect with one another. So I'll expand on this in future videos, but the idea is that there is a, a kind of art form to, to business, regardless of whether or not we associate like boring, bland um, connotations with it. So I'll expand on that in future videos. For now, let's just talk through what you can expect from today's video. Um, so writing, why writing is more valuable than ever, what you can expect from my channel, and then a, a quick shout out to the true fans and explanation. For those that don't know, I haven't been making videos for like a year now. Um, so I'm going to explain uh, that and then we'll close with a bit more about me. Before I move on to the next slide, I do want to mention this uh, right here. This is my UX writing guide. It's free if you visit my website. Um, you can sign up for my newsletter and download it. Um, I'm just putting, effectively it's supposed to function as a valuable touchstone for all the videos that I'm going to be making. So initially it's just going to be UX writing based, but it will expand to encompass all of the forms of writing that I'm going to be talking about. All right. So writing is more valuable than ever. I think personally it is the ultimate economic, social, and political tool. If we look at this image over here that I've chosen to include from Reading Kingdom, how serious is America's literacy problem? Um, you know, the, the percentage of the population of each state that has below a fifth grade level of literacy is high across the board. So what does this mean? I don't want to, you know, rag on the, uh, beat up on the American uh, public school system too much. I will leave that for um, others. My point is more so, um, if you can leverage these skills, you stand out. It's, it's, I think it's relatively low hanging fruit. I'm not saying it's easy to learn how to write well. It, it takes months and months of effort. People spend years, their entire lives, um, trying to master the skill of writing. So it's not easy, but with a little bit of work, you can stand out from the competition, so to speak. So let's run through the economic, political, and social value that I see in writing and why I think it is kind of this ultimate tool. So for one, um, 
you know, from an economic standpoint, effective marketing and messaging yields higher sales and revenue. So this is kind of the, the nitty gritty, not one of the, you know, the prettiest uh, uh, things, but it is something I deal with on a daily basis as a small business owner who, you know, uses writing to, to help my clients, to help businesses and nonprofits grow. Um, if you know how to communicate the story of your brand, your business, your nonprofit, um, you can reach an audience. Um, but it is, it's essential that first moving part, you know, you need to have effective writing uh, to, to distribute. Additionally, clear and concise instructions for efficient operations and low costs. So how can you leverage writing? For me, writing functions as something I use to plan. I mean, obviously I'm just, <laughs> right now, it, I mean, I'm just gonna be describing the obvious things about why uh, writing is so valuable, but clarity and brevity. Um, you know, if you can outline instructions for yourself on a daily basis, for others on a daily basis, design standard operating procedures using writing, that's how you can get ahead in a professional environment. That's my feeling. Um, I also want to talk about the political because I think it is lesser known. So as a business owner, I have the good fortune of being able to be my own advocate. This is something that I was not tuned into, aware of before becoming a business owner. The idea that people who typically, um, you know, work a nine to five job don't have, in many cases, the opportunity to represent themselves, to have meetings with their elected officials. And I'm speaking at the local level. Um, federal is like, don't even get me started. It's like very difficult to get in touch with those people. But um, advocacy, there's a quote I want to mention. I can't remember who said it, but if you do, uh, let me know. So if you aren't at the table, you're on the menu. So I think that is such an important quote because it emphasizes why professional representation in the private sector is so important. Because if you don't know who your advocate is, if you don't know who is meeting with your elected officials on your behalf, that's not good. Um, so I encourage folks to leverage writing as a as a political tool that they can use to communicate to their local elected officials. So, you know, words are power. If you can organize an argument, if you can construct an essay, you can, you know, effectively go into a room um, with people who are decision makers in the political sense. Those are, if we're talking the United States, those are elected officials. Um, and you can communicate what you want. You know, right now where I'm living, I'm in Wisconsin, the, the Joint Finance Committee um, is basically figuring out how money is going to be spent for the next two years, okay? It's an incredibly busy time for advocates at the state level. Um, and if you're not somebody who's, who's at the table, you're on the menu. And a lot of times, um, you know, I was just having this conversation recently with somebody, um, if you don't know who your advocate is, that's not good. You figure out who your advocate is because if it's your boss, you know, if you work for a company, the person I was having a conversation with works for a company with like 1500 employees and they didn't know who their advocate was. And I said, that probably means that it is the CEO, CXO, whoever, um, you know, people who are in the boardrooms who are not, you know, working with you, representing you. So that's, that's the point that I'm trying to make. Writing can be this terrific, um, skill that you can leverage in a political environment that can help you, um, you know, manifest, manifest, bring about the policies that improve and better uh, your life. So just a quick point there about the, the political social, I mean, empathy, like basic empathy. Uh, I think writing is very good for that, but not always kind of depends on how you use it. But for me, at least, the ability to write, to communicate my thoughts, to transcribe them, put them down on paper, read them back. Um, I do think that it helps me have better relationships and it helps me think through, um, you know, the different people that I interact with on a daily basis, be it in a personal or professional environment. And then um, accessibility. I think, you know, one from a social standpoint, one of the reasons why writing is such a valuable tool is because when you write, for the digital world, you realize how you begin to realize how important accessibility is and what accessibility actually means um, and who it's good for, who it's necessary for. This is actually a quote I, I'm paraphrasing, but it's something I took from um, 
the it might have been some ADA affiliated website. Um, I of course I'm drawing a blank now, but the idea is that um, accessibility measures are necessary for some, but valuable for all. They're helpful for all, and I'll talk more about accessibility going forward. I think when people hear the word accessibility, they think one thing. Oftentimes, not always, um, think one thing. When in the when in reality, um, what accessibility is, who it helps, why it is um, economically important. Um, I, I, I don't think, I haven't heard those conversations be had much, um, which isn't to say that they aren't just, um, you know, something that I'm noticing. I think there's more there to unpack, which I will in future videos. All right, moving on. So what you can expect, I want you to master the most valuable forms of writing. So in my mind, there's like professional writing and there's personal writing that is the the dichotomy that makes sense to me, I guess. So from a professional standpoint going forward, I want to talk a lot about user experience writing, UX writing that is, um, as well as artificial intelligence, prompt engineering. Um, this is something I'm really, really interested in. And I think, um, you know, UX writing and prompt engineering are two relatively new forms of writing, for lack of a better phrasing. I think they're going to become increasingly more important as time goes on. And I think that early adopters, people who give their time and energy to studying these fields in these, these early days will better position themselves um, to find success in a professional, entrepreneurial, whatever environment. Um, so those are super, super important. I'm gonna spend a lot of time um, talking about those. We have a lot of UX writing material to get through first, and I'm, uh, I'm working on um, planning out some sort of, uh, you know, six to 10 hours of content for, for AI prompt engineering. But also there is search engine optimization and conversion rate optimization. These are typically um, two forms of writing that are used for websites in a digital environment. Um, I, I think they're super important. I'll say more about um, both of them in future videos, but for now what you need to know is basically that SEO helps businesses, organizations, people have a larger digital footprint online. Conversion rate optimization basically optimizes um, websites for conversions. You know, whether you're trying to fundraise, to sell a product, what have you, conversion rate optimization helps make that happen. So two kind of lesser important um, forms of writing in, in my mind, but um, still something we're gonna, we're gonna spend time talking about going forward in the future. So um, there's also business writing, capital access. I am, as a small business owner, I have, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm be becoming increasingly interested in the ways in which I can use my background in writing as a tool that um, can help me basically access capital. I'm living in the United States. Capital access is a very important term uh, in, in this country. So um, I want to teach you basically bare bones how to make a, a business plan, how to write a business plan for yourself in the event that you ever want to start your own business. And I also want to help you uh, with the kind of the, the documentation that typically precedes a business plan, which is a business model canvas. So I won't talk too much about um, those forms of documentation right now, but again, that's something that is is coming in the future for folks who want to tune in. So I'm also gonna go, th you know, touch on resumes, essays, and computer programming. So these are, you know, this is kind of the, what's in the orbit of um, my channel, the topics that I'm interested in discussing the, the different forms of writing and how I think you can leverage them. So that's how I'm trying to help from a personal standpoint, um, personal writing, maybe I should have said like more artistic, um, something like that would have, <laughs> might have worked better, but fiction, poetry, commonplace books. So anybody who's been here before knows that I am a fiction writer, that I love the arts, I love fiction, poetry, and commonplace books. Um, and I want to talk about all those. I want to remain true to the roots of my channel, even as I 
you know, pivot towards something that is more professionally focused, skills oriented, um, because fiction and poetry provide the the lessons that I think they can offer us are it's difficult to find them anywhere else. Narrative, studying narrative, and how um, you know different uh, uh, poetry elements. I'm drawing a blank on the terminology, but it can be super super valuable because I think when you approach language, typically when people approach like professional writing, for example, it is through only a professional writing lens and it isn't necessarily informed by, you know, some of, isn't informed by the arts, isn't informed by, you know, fictional elements like narrative, like, uh, like, you know, poet, the, the poetic understanding of, of voice, of tone. Um, so there's a lot of rich material there that I think if you're able to access it at the same time that you're trying to write for a professional, um, some sort of professional end, that you will be much better positioned. Um, also commonplace books, again, if you were here before, you know I love commonplace books. Made a lot of videos about them, a lot of videos that probably don't warrant being watched these days. But nevertheless, um, they can be really valuable. It's basically a way of you know, documenting your thoughts and your learnings so that you can learn faster. So um, this picture was actually, this was taken when pretty recently I spoke at a creative writing workshop at my alma mater, the University of Wisconsin. So that was great. It was a little surreal. I was very excited to be there um, outside of the building. So that's me there. Another um, thing I wanted to mention about the UX writing guide that I've put together that's available on my website is long term, this will grow to encompass all of the forms of writing that are on this page. So I anticipate my the guide right now is like just under 20 pages. So if we multiply that out by two, four, six, eight, however many, 11 here, I anticipate that it's gonna end up being like this 200 page beast of, of, uh, of a document that kind of covers all the essentials of um, these different forms of writing. So just be ready for that. If you join my newsletter, you'll get installments um, as it, as it, they all come out, you know, as I'm, I'm producing them. It's a lot of content. It's taken me a lot of time, but it is happening. Okay. Next slide. This is to the OGs, to the people. This is for the people who have been here for a very long time, who I disappeared on, unfortunately, about a year ago in April of, um, of 2022. So life got in the way but now i'm back and this is uh what happened so there are supposed to be emojis here they i guess did not make it when i was exporting the pdf so that's a shame um there was a birthday cake emoji here and then these are two like two of the faces like uh, like those faces so that wasn't a great description um, but there were emojis here. So I stopped posting in the spring of 2022 work. I, I, I was not at, at this time last year, I was not a small business owner. We were in the process of starting a business. Um, yeah. And work was not going well. I had a really bad boss, which I would be happy to say more about in the future. I don't want to dwell on it too much right now. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a, a a pretty common experience. If you want to hear more about it, let me know, and I will make space in the in the content going forward to discuss it. Because again, it is it's something that is common. I actually had a a conversation with Steve Donahue um, over a year ago. It was like the dead of winter, I think, and he said um, he told he was like, you know it's never going to get better. It's not ever going to get better. And I was like, well, maybe it will. And he was like, it will not get better. And it turned out to never get better. Um, just a bad boss. And it, you know, took kind of me leaving to, for the, the organization I was working with to see that. Um, and it happens often. A lot of times it, it, you know, it happens with with young people and I think more people need to be talking about it because you know the problem isn't always uh, the worker let's just say um, so yeah if you want to hear about that let me know it was a very weird time a very stressful time 
um, you know, we were living in a, a really small community. Um, the population of the entire county during the um, the slow season, as it's called, like winter through, you know, the the when would that be the end of May, there's effectively like 20,000 people that lives in the entire county. And then during the summer months, it skyrockets. It's a tourist destination and the population swells to north of 2 million. So it's a, it, it was a very unique environment, um, a very strong business community. You know, I, I, we decided one day, my, my girlfriend and I, that we were just going to, that we were going to launch the business and go all in. And so that's what we did. Uh, summer fall and winter 2022 were very stressful um i was working constantly i'm still working constantly i don't expect that to um change in the <laughs> in the near future but yeah it was a it was a really hard time and i learned a lot and i'm in a position now where as you'll see this bullet point if you haven't figured it out now i am still alive i did make it um, and i want to come back to youtube because i feel like i have learned a lot and you know the experience I had making content was great. I loved the community, the people that I was able to get in contact with, and I want to communicate what I've learned. I have been working with the University of Wisconsin's English department, with you know, staff in the English department, to help make materials, um, writing materials for um, young professionals as well as young entrepreneurs, hopeful entrepreneurs. Um, I've tried to make documentation more accessible for them that that basically communicates best practices for professionals and entrepreneurs um, and that's really what the goal of this channel is it's to make education um, write specifically writing education in all its forms more accessible to effectively as many people as I can so that's why I disappeared um, yeah, basically one day, um, you know, the rug was just pulled out from under me and I was fired and it, you know, it happens. And I, again, I don't think it's something that it's something that is difficult to talk about, but I want to be the person who talks about it because, you know, in, in my case, it was um, done maliciously and I'm really okay with it now. I'm very comfortable talking about it now, especially considering, you know, uh, like the the way the last year has gone for my business. But in terms of you know how I was immediately after it happened, it was it was a pretty scary time. And if I can help somebody, if I can help make somebody's time easier, that you know, in the event that they find themselves in a similar situation, that is really. Um, know something I would like to do so two important terms I learned during this time that I want to mention as a as kind of an aside to make sure that you know I'm still offering some value on this slide is that um, you know two terms that really became important um, during this time that I learned uh, were user centricity and market research so user centricity is something I will say more about um, in the future as we start talking more and more about UX writing and then market research, learning how to do market research, you know, um, using these terms as jumping off points for educational, um, you know, your educational pursuits. These are two super important terms if you're a business owner or if you're interested in how you can leverage writing, specifically digital writing to, um, you know, open personal, professional, entrepreneurial doors, what have you. So those are two important terms. If you have questions, let me know. Um, the picture here is me in the, the little library uh, uh, in the town that we were living in, um, which just to give you an idea of where we were living, um, it's a little town in Wisconsin called Sister Bay. It's, um, I think it might be more than a thousand people, but just barely. And it's one of the reasons why it's so unique is um, it's actually one of the few places in the United States where the average age of the population, of the residents, of the community, exceeds that of Congress. So I think the average age of Congress is like low 60s, 
and the average age here was like 60 mid mid 60s i can't exactly remember but um just a, a weird community to to live in i did not do my due diligence ahead of ahead of moving there but it was great um you know there are highs and lows but the uh the town is situated on um like right on the great lakes so um that was that was incredible i'm now a, a big a, a great lakes maximalist you could say so that kind of covers where i've been for the last year um i i encourage all the all the real ones to uh to to leave a comment to say hi because um i'm happy to be back i i'm excited to you know to have like this kind of um solidified yeah I, I think that's a good word like solidified understanding of where i want the channel to go and what end i want it to serve um yeah so be in touch and uh you know let's let's uh make some better writers all right so and then really like let's just close now i'll say a little bit about me um about the team so first there is finnegan this is finnegan right here he's my big boy he's three years old um, and then there is Moby. Moby is two years old. Um, these are my corgis. I love them. Um, they're my precious angels. They make appearances every now and then in videos, not as much as they used to. Um, people who watched my previous videos will, will know that they were included often. They're still here. Um, I'll figure out ways to incorporate them, but um, yeah, not they're not not as as popular, but they are in the background. They are emotionally supporting me at all times. Um, and then this is me. For those that uh, that don't know, this was at a couple's um, art night that that my girlfriend and I went to. We were celebrating. I think we were celebrating our anniversary, but it might have been her birthday. Maybe it was my birthday. I don't know it, that whatever February March there's like Valentine's Day there's anniversary there's birthdays there so who knows um, exactly what she does um, hopefully this is buried enough for me not to get busted but um, yeah we were this is just me I was taking painting very seriously I am many years old I say Finn's three Moby's two not so cute when I say how, how old I am um but i'm i'm 26 so regardless of that um kind of like cusp uh uh gen z so we're here for the gen zers um we support millennials uh gen xers boomers uh you got to prove yourself i'm a little more skeptical but you know open-minded importantly um that's a joke anyways uh, yeah, from an education standpoint, kind of what informs all of my videos, the perspective I have. I graduated from the University of Wisconsin. That's where I did my undergrad in 2019. I was super fortunate in my educational opportunities. I had a ton of great professors at the University of Wisconsin, specifically um, Jakira Diaz, who's an amazing, amazing fiction writer. Um, and I encourage everybody to check out her books. She helped me put together my applications for graduate school. She is a huge, huge reason why I was able to get a scholarship at, uh, at Johns Hopkins University to the writing seminars where I taught classes and got to learn from some incredible, incredible writers. So I don't know if you can hear it right now. This is an aside, but um, we got Moby down here. Let's see if I can get him. Say hi to the people. Thank you. Good job. Um, yeah, so that was Moby. We found a way to get him involved. He was drinking water, making a lot of noise, and I think he's going to be doing it again. But if you're still here, I'm hoping that you'll just bear with me to the end and uh, won't mind Moby uh, uh, drinking in the background. So anyways, um, Jakira Diaz, huge help in, you know, getting me from undergrad to graduate school so definitely check out her work um i completed my i earned my master's in 2021 um 2022 as i touched on in the last slide was when i started my business and my business serves small businesses and nonprofits. it's a digital marketing agency um 
and it has worked out things have been going well so definitely not easy to start your own business but is worthwhile and i could talk about it for literally hours so maybe i will at some point if that if that's the kind of thing anybody's interested in um we'll see so now really what i'm trying to do is help folks leverage writing specifically digital writing in terms of the people i want to help i really want to help people who are in the humanities people or who passed through the humanities were humanities majors um when they were in when they were in undergrad if they went to um university i want to help these folks because i think that at least if i can draw on my personal experience here i didn't feel empowered to start my own business now obviously you know whatever a lot of that is just personal insecurities and and self-doubt but I do think that one thing based on my experience at um, both of these these great universities is that um, there needs to be a, a stronger push for helping um, humanities majors um, you know familiarize themselves with professional um, and business best practices and that is really what this channel is about because I think what I just said in terms of you know understanding professional and entrepreneurial best practices and systems I think that all comes back to literacy it all comes back to reading and writing and how you use reading and writing as tools to facilitate your own professional success so um, I love writing and I'm going to be talking about it at great lengths to help you get real skills and um, you know even maybe start your own business but at the bare minimum get uh, get more skills and you know climb climb the professional ladder so I think that is about everything I have I want to thank you so much for watching if you're still here bless you um, I know these are gonna be much longer videos um, than my first time around lower editing but um all the content nevertheless i think this is just gonna allow me to produce more i'm trying to be like very focused in how i uh i i'm doing these videos if you were here the first time you know that i have a funny way of talking in circles so or just talking around the idea so um yeah thanks for being here subscribe to my channel follow my other socials and download my free ebook my ux writing guide um, and with that, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.